for the try to What in God's name is going on in here? What was that ruckus? Uh, what ruckus? I was just in my office and I heard a ruckus. Could you describe the ruckus, sir? Alright y'all, it's your boy Smiles and we back for another episode of the Music Impulse. I'm here with my guy, Big Papa Skeeter, aka Skeeter Gross in the building. What's good, my guy? What up though? I'm not I'm not here in podcast mode. I'm here in uh, rapper mode. Rapper mode. <laughs> music impulse. Thanks for having me, guys. I, I'm a big fan of the show. Big fan. Phenomenal. <laughs> Phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I had to bring on my guy, you know, head honcho for an audible ruckus IR presents up in the building. You know? yeah. But yeah, like he said, this is a, a different type of thing. We're we're not doing this like two podcasters. This is this is a podcaster rapper interview. Ah, this yeah. is a first yeah. this, this is your first rapper interview, um, Mr. Gross. It is. It is. Okay, it is. okay, okay. I'm yeah, nervous. So, uh, <laughs> all right, all right don't, don't worry. I'll, I'll walk you through this. You know, I know sometimes rappers are kind of, you know, scared when it comes to these podcasts. Okay. Just know that you can cuss, unlike on radio. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. That's all. Gotcha. So you, mm -hmm. you already know what it is. <laughs> but yeah, uh, just joking. But my guy, he just dropped his, his new project, um, Shadow Work Demos. And we're going to just, you know. What's understood walk. ain't got to be explained. <laughs> right. You are. But, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, before we even really get into the project, I really want to go back and what was the beginning of you wanting to work on music and everything? Let's go back to that. Oh, wait. For this season that I'm in or all the way, all the way back to the beginning? This season that you're in. Okay. So, well, I got to go all the way back to the beginning to tell you this shit. Like, it's just how it is. So, as with any other young black male growing up in the inner city, okay, you explore your opportunities and your options, right? Like, well, what do I like to do? Oh, of course, you know, Music Impulse, that's how we linked up in college. Niggas just big music fans, one. But uh, I think... When 8 Mile came out in Detroit, like, everybody thought that they was a battle rapper. Like, everybody wanted to rap. Mm -hmm. So, like, you standing around, little cyphers going on, little little battles. You know what I'm saying, Papa? You remember BG? We had a couple of little, yep. little, those little, little battles and stuff. And, yeah. And, yep. yeah. Well, I didn't get, you know, they, I will get to that, but I didn't get to it, participate in any of the cyphers because couldn't rap on beat. I was, a, I was a battle rap nigga. Like, I had funny shit, witty shit, like bars, all of that. But uh, and they rhymes. They was, and I had some, you know, clever rhymes, but I couldn't rap on beat. A nigga throw that beat on, couldn't find the melody, couldn't find the tempo, yeah. none of that shit. So, I, instead of like, you know, what I'm saying, figuring it out, I just I quit. Now, mind you, in middle in middle school, high school, we had two and a half mixtapes that we put out. Me and my boy Ma. Uh, that's what. Uh, so we, we always be rapping, but afflicted. Like it was. It started off as we was a rap group. It turned into just like a crew. Oh. But like okay, it started yeah. off as a rap group in like tenth. 10th 11th grade and we used to meet up every day after school we go over to mall house we would record in the basement bars for days like this shit was fire it was very mixtape driven i was rapping like lloyd banks so it was very monotone and like punchliney, right okay, but it was hit okay the bars was funny but then we dropped the mixtape people liked it they were just like yeah low if you could rap on beat this would be great but y'all 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 got some we didn't care we getting money you know what I'm saying doing anything i was like all right that rap shit is over with so yeah. now to bring it back full circle, as I mentioned, college, participated in a couple ciphers here and there. You know what I'm saying? You know, I would be around when, when mm -hmm. all the rapping was going on, but again, couldn't rap on beat, decided, you know what? That's not my lane. I tried. Remember the, uh, was it the Allegiant tape yeah, that the they Allegiant had at Bowling State. Green? So, so yeah. we, it was a whole little rapper circuit going on. Not little, because it was a big deal. Like, it was a lot of artists that was participating. It was a lot of bars, too. A lot of talented musicians. Mm -hmm. I was not as good as they were. I'm not going to lie to you. So when I had to submit, it was like it was the uh, Canon uh, beat that you had to rap to and send it in, yeah. mm -hmm. and it didn't make it. So I just was like, "All right, I guess I'll find something else to do." That's partially why why I did radio and like podcasting because I still get to talk shit over beats. You know what I'm saying? So it's cool. I still get to be around my love for music and all of that. But so I say, like one of the things I said to myself, I, my pen always like works I, I tell people that all day like i wrote all my own reps you know what i'm saying like my shit's sharp and what i did was i just was like and i told my best friend i was like one of these days before it's all said and done when we got when we making our money and we settled off into our lives i said i'm gonna record a full-on project just to say that i did that shit just to get that shit off because my shit too nice 
to just let mm-hmm. it sit in these notebooks. I got notebooks for days, smiles are just like rats. Damn. <laughs> like no, you guys need easy. Like it's just they just sitting somewhere in storage. Like I done carried them around from high school to college, in college. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. like moved three times here in Houston. Uh, I just got these notebooks. And I went back over. Some of the bars are still fire. Some of them you could tell a uh, young nigga wrote them and Yeah. yeah. You like, ooh, yeah. I don't know why I thought that was her. But you like, oh no, I can probably make this work. Well, not nah, it wasn't nothing like that. They all hit if you ask me, but I just realized how dated they are or how yeah, oh, yeah. how stupid they sound. But if they if I would have got them off back then when I wrote them, they would have been fired. I ain't never like nah, my shit hit, bro. I'm never lie to you. Especially back when I was punchline rapper, man. Like crazy. Okay. Crazy. PLL punchline low. <laughs> yeah. But that's how I was. So my re you know, of course hanging with Kane. I've been doing A and R work. You know, we do it together sometimes as far as like when we work with different artists and all that. Or yep, co- yep, compare yep. and contrast and all that. So being around it, it was just only matter it's only a matter of time before I was gonna find my way back to it. But um Honestly, bro, like, like I just, I was like, man, it's time, man. I got to do this. A lot of, there's a lot of stuff I've been reflecting on, a lot of stuff that I've been working on, and I was just like, man, like, I gotta get this shit out. You know what I'm saying? Now, my goal is not to continue on as a rapper. Really, just want to be more of an A and R. But how you gonna trust me to help you if if I ain't got no no skin in the game? You feel me? Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's uh, that's how we arrived here, Smiles. Okay, yeah, I was like, cause uh, again, it's a super dope project. Um, Three, three tracks, you know, uh, in preparation of uh, a, a bigger project that you yeah. alluded to even on, on um, your post and even in the music, but uh, you dropped it on your birthday first, you know, before you even also get more deep into the project was, how was your birthday? How, it was, was cold, it? You know, man. Three, three Six Mafia. Up from the 36 Chambers. Nah, it was cool. It was cool. Um, it's a typical uh, young old dude where it's just like I went to a nice restaurant, you know what I'm saying? Spared no expense. Uh, went to a cigar bar, you know, the gun range. Then uh, it was Easter, so then we went over because of like Shar's parents was watching London. So then I was able to go over there. We did like a little Easter egg hunt. Came back to the crib and chill, man. It was it was it was, it was everything, but it was it was chill at the same time, man. Because like the space that I'm in in my life, like I just. I just do me, <laughs> you feel me, and have fun yeah. while I do it. Hey, yeah, hey, me, me and my girl was just talking about that uh, earlier today. It's like, as long as I do my little fun, that I'm, I'm, I'm cool. Like, cause yeah. I, I, I was using like you and Neezy and uh, London Exempt. I was, I was like, yeah, like, Lo don't do all that hanging around. It's like it's mainly just family. Like, hey, I'm yeah. cool with just being the same way. Like, every now and then, you know, go out do my stuff. You know. You know, part of the frat life, you know, do that every now and then. Maybe yeah. go hang out with some friends every now and then. But I'm cool with just chilling with the fam, keep it right there in, in, in the core. Like, I'm cool with being at home, yeah. us having fun with our kids and all that. It's because, it's, honestly, what for me, anyway, I can, I can only speak for me. But it, I've found the peace that I've been looking for in my life. You feel me? So, and then, you know, I have friends, like a big group of friends stuff all back in Detroit, but being down here in Houston, like I don't, I only have like a handful of people like that's like, I consider my friends like that for real. So doing big get togethers and all of that shit, everybody be busy, everybody be working. I, you know what I'm saying? I've just been more conditioned to being more uh, introverted and more home oriented since I've been in Houston. Like I'm not Mr. Party guy like that. Now, if it's a a work function or if I got to be there, I'll show up and move around and, you know what I'm saying? Handle my business. But I, I, I've, I'm not staying the whole time. I'm not, oh, who, like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, let's go here after this. Next. One move, and I'm out. Like, that's that's it. Yeah. I'm not doing the, the, I'm not a vibe chaser. It, it, and it's no disrespect to nobody. It is, but I consider a vibe chaser. It's like they don't never know when to take their ass home. You know what I'm saying? Like, we leave the club, it's 2 o'clock. All right, where we get into next? Let's go get something to eat. Then we, oh, y'all want to go hit up this after hour spot? Oh, let's go hit up this other spot to eat at. Oh, let's go smoke another one in the car before we go home. Nigga, you could go home. And smoke at home And go to sleep at home Like the, the, the later it gets The more crazy the night becomes Like and that's just from experience Like you know what I'm saying I was very active as a as a teenager Like I was out and about And hey, the later it gets The freaks really do come out at night And I'm not talking about the freaky freaks This ain't the freak nick It's like the, it's more reason for Our chances for us to get in trouble Or something to go wrong Yeah yeah and especially like at at our age and stages, like yo, I got a wife and kid to go home to. 
That's really it that's for me. That little, all that other shit aside, I got a wife and kid to come home to. I'm busy. That shit do. Mm-hmm. It's like that extra move that I didn't plan might uh, cause all that to go into uh, chaos. Well, I mean, even, it's just like you said right there. I remember it's different now, but when I was growing up, if I'm if I'm riding and I'm oh I'm hungry, Coney Island, right? It's, it's a track mm-hmm. on on the project called uh, Coney Run. I'm not just, oh, I'm hungry. Let me just pull over here. You don't just pull up to any, you go to your Coney. You know what I'm saying? You go to the Coney where you're familiar. You don't just pull over and get gas anywhere. I'm just going to get some snacks. Let me just pull in and see what they got over here. You don't just pull over anywhere and walk up in somebody thinking that they sweet like that. You got to like that, that, or oh, it came out of nowhere. You wasn't supposed to be there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Go home. <laughs> That's where that is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll talk over you. Hey, babe. Congratulations on your EP. I knew it was going to turn out amazing. Amazing. We can't wait for the next one. I know how hard you worked on this. I know everything, all the backstory, the ins and outs, everything that you did to put this together, the meanings of everything. And I'm so, so happy for you and your success. I wish you many, many more. Cheers to your next chapter that you're going to be doing. And as always, I love you. And, you know, Coney Run is my favorite because can you get mine, boo? But, yeah, so to get back to the project, you know, Shadow Work Demos. First, let's talk about the meaning behind the uh, yeah. title of the, of the project. So, one, it's a little bit of a... Remember when Drake did the uh, Dark Lane Demos? Yeah. So that's why I was like, all right, I, I could. That it wasn't the initial name of it, but I, like, right, th- this could work. When I was figuring out what to call it, I was either gonna call it Sheep's Clothes or something else. But I ain't wanna like. I just want to do it, right? I ain't wanna because the main project that's coming after this is the one I put the most thought into. This is just to kind of get niggas ready and for them to know like what to expect from me, right? So, but I've last year I was reading this book, uh, Shadow Work by Daniel Masi. And it was just talking about how to heal, like, like through meditation and the right therapy and stuff, how you can kind of uh, help heal your inner self and kind of revisit, you know what I'm saying, past traumas, but in a new light. So if you remember, like, uh, remember uh, Christmas Carol? Yep. With Scrooge and all that, and then he, he yeah. go through. He see the ghost of Christmas past, the ghost of Christmas, uh, the, the ghost of Christmas present, yeah. the future, blah blah blah. So, like in a sense, shadow work is like you know what I'm saying. You going back, revisiting stuff, and scenarios, and situations from your life, but you're doing it through an objective lens. Your job is only to be a voyeur and just observe and figure it out, right? So you may go back to a time when you got into a fight, and you be like, yeah, man. I beat that nigga up Or you know what I'm saying I beat him up real bad This and that third Man you should have seen him everybody. But if you go back And watch it Or, or like re- Re-experience it Like in, in the shadow work Like through meditation And all that Then you yeah. think And you be like Man you actually Overdid that shit And there was no reason To really You know what I'm saying Hit him at all Like And you thought Everybody was hyping you up They really was like Man you tripping you know what I'm saying, but you, you seeing everything from uh, a different third vantage point. point. Yeah, 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 and then yeah. you understand. Now that's that's example isn't as much because it's more for me. It's more so about situations and scenarios and relationships where like I experience trauma to the point where I feel you know what I'm saying, like like stuck on certain things or whatever, right? Like, and that's just me. You know what I'm saying, just trying to work through, trying to be a better person. We talked about having the the, the baby and, and my wife and all that. Like, I'm trying to be better for them. So it's certain things that it's like, all right, if this no longer serves me, let me revisit it, heal from it, and then like do away from it. Or if it does serve me, let me heal from it, evolve, and then be able to use it for good going forward, type of thing. So I'm like, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of learning and unlearning, bro. Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, which you know, shout out to you for suggesting on me checking out the book Unlearn. Yeah. Um, but uh, also to kind of go along with you know the, the learning and the unlearning, I saw you, you post about you know you having a midlife crisis and oh, yeah. you know now going to therapy. Uh, speak about that uh, and also how's that helping with the music? That's what inspired this. I, so I've been working on it. So the project that I dropped was in the past six months. The bigger project that I'm working on, I've been working on this shit for three years without telling nobody. Shadow work demos, right? Because this is yeah. this is the work that's being done in, in in the dark where ain't nobody paying attention, nobody cares, nobody's looking for it. 
It's just the work that I've been doing on myself. And working on the project, it's going to be like 10 to 12 tracks. We're still finalizing stuff, but it's like 65% done, right? Because it's, yeah. it's been, been scrapped, re-brought up, scrapped again, rewritten, changed around. It's, it's, it's evolved as I've grown. Mm-hmm. But like working on that, I, and I'm telling you because working on that project for the past three years is what drove me to have to go to therapy. Because like when you talk about you peeling off uh band-aids and scabs of old shit that like you thought you was over but then like you re-experiencing it or re like visiting it through a different lens and it 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 cut it it, it's not debilitating but it cuts deeper now because like um, as a more mature adult I'm, i'm going back and reflecting on things but then also now i'm seeing that the the cause and effect that it's had on me all these years okay you feel me so like like it made me go to therapy now the irony is my therapist he just found out about the podcast we that just came up i don't i'm not going to therapy just throwing stuff at i'm just sitting back i i you know i i give information but i'm just sitting back and he let him ask the questions and then i just respond to the questions but he said he he was talking about uh me smoking weed and he, he i think he about to give me some speech about how you're not supposed to and all that he's like but no like it helps with anxiety it helps with this and that and I was just telling him, I was like, sometimes, I was like, I don't abuse it. Like, I'm very, I try to be very responsible. I said, but sometimes I, f- I feel myself like I'll just be smoking my memories away. I just, or I, I smoke to not have to remember stuff. And he was like, that's unhealthy. You know what I'm saying? He didn't know nothing about me working on a rap project or none of that stuff. But he was just like, hey, like, I think you should, um, he's like, you got to get, you have to talk about this stuff. He's like, you got to get it out loud, say it out loud. That's how you work through it and how you release that weight off of you. He's like getting it out, expressing it. And I was like, okay. Mm-hmm. Now he don't know, but like that was confirmation that like, man, you got to go ahead and put this shit out. So shadow work demos was a stop. Don't let it go a, a, another three, four years before you finish this project. Now there's an accountability piece because I showed y'all a little bit of the work that I've been doing, just a little bit, the fun part. Mm-hmm. But the deep like shit, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm still working on that shit. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's is is I like it because it's giving me is is substance or whatever to like what I'm talking about. But as I'm working through it, I'm healing myself. So my goal is that by the time the project is all the way done, I will be fully healed and reconciled from that that segment of my life because it's a timeline for my life. And then now I can be my best self to go live the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and, and also just think about all that is that how a lot of rappers is that that's why everybody say like they first project is usually like they best one because you putting everything your whole life all that into this yeah. one project because hey. I might not get another chance to do it. Again. No, nobody may give a fuck, right? And even then with my project, people might not give a fuck, but I I'm doing this because I need to do this because this is the shit that I just been sitting on, man. Like like it's just like, you know, you mentioned it. Like so my my brand now is, you know what I'm saying, entrepreneur, family man, you know what I'm saying, marketing specialist, I work corporate, you know what I'm saying, for Fortune 500 companies, all of that shit, right? But like I grew up the way that I grew up. And I was a product of my environment, you know what I'm saying? And for for positive or for negative, however you view it, but I feel like it was positive because I was able to take certain things and like, you know what I'm saying, go a different path to get out of the hood. But I grew up in the hood till I mm-hmm. till uh, better call Skeet. I talk about it. I I didn't move out of the hood until after I graduated from college. Yep. So when you twenty what twenty two twenty three. Your whole life has been in the hood. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like I, I'm, what? That was 22, 23. I'm 36 now. So I still have not been out of the hood longer than longer I was than in I the hood. lived in it, yeah. It's got to come somewhere. And, and, and part of it smiles too is, like I said, the trauma and all that. Because, like, I, you suppress all of that because, like, I just got to do my job. You know what I'm saying? I got to I gotta be polished and professional and this and that. But it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, can't just sweep all that shit under the rug. You're going to trip on it at some point. So might as well get it out the way now. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, really, to even further get into all, all that, you know, this you really, like I said, you've been talking about it for three years. Even like these these new songs, like you know, we've been working on for a few months and mm-hmm. everything. Uh, how do I want to say this? How does it how does it feel to know, like, hey, I at least got like one like little intro portion of this yeah. m- bigger book out? How does um, it feel? It feels good, bro. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. Now, I'm not going to let it go to my head. There's still more more work to be done. I still got other shit that I got to do and all of that. But it just, it felt 
I know that I will feel better when I drop this full project. You understand what I'm saying? Like, like if that's what it feels like, just to get a little bit like like of relief like from it, then I gotta continue. I gotta see this thing all the way through. Now, after that, I can't tell you that I'm about to just you know what I'm saying be Mr. Rapper Man like left and right. Yeah. But the the goal is that I now have that when I'm done, I will have some bodies of work that can be leveraged for other opportunities, whether it be in music or whether it be spun off into other like like art stuff. You know what I'm saying? Content pieces. So oh, yeah, that's the bigger picture, but it's like, let me try this. Like for like, especially, man. I mean, look, how many rappers start podcasting? Right. So let me come to your lane. Let me let me come right. to your house. You know what I'm saying? Let me let, let me try your shirt on. Like like. <laughs> yeah, I'm t- tired of this shit. <laughs> every other week, a new rapper but, wants to. But they podcast. they about to be tired because every other week a podcaster is about to spit some raps. <laughs> <laughs> a podcast about spits and raps. Mr. Gross, what an amazing book, a masterpiece you have written. I can't wait to see what the next chapter will be for you. And I just want to tell you I love you so much with all my heart and that you're my trench baby always. Love, Mama. Um, speaking of these raps, uh, one before yeah, again get into the songs. I love the versatility of the of the tracks and, and um, what was like the decision Appreciate going that. into? Was it just like it's just what came from the beat you chose, or like you and Titcher was like, all right, I want if I'm gonna give him like a little three piece, I want to show him the versatility of what I can do. Uh, versatility was a, a factor. Uh, all of those beats, I, I say this, but like came like he be sending me stuff and like, hey, check this out, check this out. And some of the stuff, like, some stuff be for me. Like, the, the the main project, he sent me all those beats. That was a folder that was curated specifically for me, the styles of the beats, all of that, right? Um, These beats for the Shadow Work demos was just other folders that he had around, and we was just waiting to hear back from different people. And so my thing is, I'm always, I consider myself always auditioning. If, if some shit come through and it's fire, I'll try it. You know what I'm saying? I'll write some stuff to it. It's not, I'll send him a reference. If he say, all right, this is cool, we can keep it. Um, or like, he'd be like, well, I ain't heard nothing back, so it's all yours, right? Now, sometimes it's one of those, it's cool, we can keep it. Let's wait and see if somebody, you know what I'm saying, wants it. And then if we don't hear nothing from him, then all right, you can have that. That's what Coney Run was. Like, yeah. it was one of those, all right, sent it out, waiting, waiting. Months went by, and then it was like, all right, you can keep it. So when he said I could keep it, then I started really trying to, like, write to it. I rewrote Coney Run eight times, bro. Damn. Now, <laughs> The, the, now when he made it I'm bringing Kane up Because Kane is like He's he's not just a, a A beat maker Or a producer Like this nigga like Curates music This nigga's a composer Like he put this shit together Bro like Sonically mm-hmm. So when he When he crafted Coney Run He was like um, I, I hear more like Sada Baby on this I want like More like a, a A silly story Or like You know what I'm saying Not a silly story But like just tell a story And have a bunch of stuff mm-hmm. Going on so I was like, I right, bet. Now, first couple times when I had it, it was cool, but like it sounded more like Eminem was telling the story than Sada Baby was telling the story. It's too wordy. Yeah. And, and I will admit that. Anybody that's listening, my shit is too wordy. I'm still working on that because I'm a writer naturally, and like I feel like I got to give you certain details and context. Rap-wise, you just got to leave a lot of stuff up to... to yeah, like uh, sometimes less is more. You feel me? I'm learning that, though. But... This is a story, so I'm like, I want you to know and understand where you at. Like, it's, okay, which Coney Island is this going on at? You know, where are the girls? All right, what happened to the niggas? All right, how's he going to get out of this one? What happened? Oh, wait, he didn't just pull up in this net. A distraction happened, and it co- it's a story there, right? Mm-hmm. So in order for it to, like, ride the way that, it, that the final version came out, I just rewrote it. And I'm not going to lie to you. I went on vacation. Remember when I was on the cruise? Yeah. Uh, Cause I was stuck I couldn't figure out How to like reapproach it And it was a, a Reggae song I was listening to That London loved so much And It was a story And I just kept Listening to that story Over and over again And it helped me Like unblock my writer You know what I'm saying Unblock my yeah. pen And I was like This is how I gotta Tell the story Throw a twist in there Do this Do that blah, 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 blah. Finished it out And then from there I just had to re-record it um, Better Call Skeet Was I did that one. I wanted to do more with it, but it was just kind of sitting there. That was the first one that was done. So I just had that. Okay, that that could be a good single. This Coney Run could be a good single. All right, well, why don't we package them all together then? And then I was like, well, let me go ahead and add a third one in and kind of set the tone. And that's where Mm -hmm. Gross Income uh, Freestyle came in. Because that was just me just talking shit. Like, I just wanted to pop my shit. I'm not going to lie to you. It was, it's, 
I built that song because it was a couple things that I wanted to say, and I just had those things, and I just freestyled in between to like get me back and forth to those points. Okay, yeah, like, yeah, because it was it was a nice little intro to the project. It was like okay, yeah, it was supposed to catch you to speed, and I could have kept going, but I was just like nah, like save it. Like I'm not trying to just not trying to be a complete song. It's a freestyle. Let me talk a little bit of shit so you can just get the you know set the tone. Go in the better car skeet to catch you up. Cause if you notice, even in there, I wrapped you up. Like I said, like I'll fill you in on the backstory later. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah, like I we'll did. get yeah, to that yeah. later. I'm alluding, it's constant illusion. And then even yeah. at the end of Better Call Skeet, I said we about to slide to the Coney Island to get some yeah, chili I cheese. Yeah, I did, I did, I did catch that. Yeah. So it's a short story. It's just a, it's a yeah. short little story. It all kind of lines up a little bit anyway, but like it sets the stage for the bigger project. But that was done on purpose because I told you I do a little A and R work. I believe sequencing is important. Mm-hmm. Yes, I believe. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, and then Which also a lot of these niggas don't do <laughs> right. To show. But, but, but to your point, different styles. So I gave you a freestyle. I gave you a West Coast more kind of like uh, story, and then I turn around and give you a straight up Detroit style like Coney Dog with all the fixings on that shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like onions. You know what I'm saying? Mustard. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I gave you the whole shit, and then. To, if I'm being real, Coney Run is that's not my story. That's just a story. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like that? That's you know. I'm sure if somebody shot up a Coney Island, somebody would heard about it. But like, or not? It's Detroit. Whatever. But like, that's just a story. But it's more relatable because who all has ha, hasn't felt that anxiety or felt that? You know what I'm saying? Like, like who's all in there? Mm-hmm. Uh, do I, yep. I got to get my food? Uh, it's creepy in there. Oh, I know this nigga from high school. Hey, 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 can you get my food? Yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. Then you walk in, you be like, oh, shit. There's three niggas in here, and they be robbing niggas up in here, and, and she not trying to get robbed. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's see how we get this one out. Yep. So, this is storytelling. Telling stories, telling my stories, telling other stories that come from the environment that I come from, all of that shit. Or Raider shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Speaking of the storytellers, I want to ask you: Do you have any favorite storytelling tracks that you that was like maybe like your, your top three, top five? Hell yeah. Um. Uh. I was go- okay. I'm just mentioning this. It's not my favorite no more because it was the shit when I was growing up. But then when you correlate and put the two and two together, you'd be like, "This shit is trash." Not <laughs> trash, but it's like I've been I've been uh, duped. Little boy fresh. By uh, mm-hmm. San, uh, Joel Santana, right? That shit was hard. It was a good story he told, right? Mm-hmm. But that's the movie Fresh. If you ever seen the movie Fresh, Joel's just summarized it. So I'm like, oh, that wasn't a good story. But if off my list, uh, uh, Meet the Parents by Jay Z, mm-hmm. uh, Three Sides to a Story by Joe Button, uh, Ninety Days by Project Pat. Own nigga by Project Pat. Um, we could get gangster by Project Pat. Okay, yeah, because <laughs> I, I, I found like a little top twenty-five list, and I know that one was on there. The part that we can get gangster. Yeah, hey, bro. <laughs> yeah, wait till you book the Project mm-hmm. Pat interview for Music Impulse. I'm be on there, and I got questions. I got questions based on the stories. I got questions. The other one of old school. Oh, I'm lying. Niggas bleed by Biggie. Uh, and then um, damn, what was the other one I was about to say? Children's Story by Slick Rick. Okay, yep, that's on here too. Yep. And then ATF by DMX. Those and I, if I keep going, I'm gonna keep going. But like ATF by DMX for sure. Like Nick. Okay. Nick, um, look, 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 don't smoke when you listen to that because you're gonna be tripping. <laughs> Actually, that might yeah no, ATF. That's probably where Cody Ron was really inspired from because the anxiety and the. It's, it's creepy It's some spooky shit bro. But all of those are named All of those are named And then last one um, the, the reggae song that helped yeah. me Was uh, Roller Skates By Steel Impulse Or Steel Pulse Steel Pulse Steel Impulse Steel Pulse, Pulse. Yeah okay. yeah But London, London Guy jumped on me Messed up my clothes Smashed and grabbed my radio It was That's alright Okay. In London, know the whole song word for word too. Just won't do it on camera. That's why y'all ain't seen it. <laughs> right. Yeah. I know how you be like, damn, like camera off. She be ready like as soon as the camera. Yeah. What? No, for real, for real. That's why I'm not even gonna force it. It's just like no. But no, like I named all of those 
shows you my range. But I like mm-hmm. storytelling. And that, that's where when I feel like it was fully flushed out. You know what I'm saying? So that's where I said, like, wordiness-wise, like, me trying to tell the story. But it's 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 got to have action in it and all of that shit in there, too. Like, otherwise, it's like what we listen to. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I know, like, the uh, little list I found online had stuff like Baltimore Love Thing. I got, got a story to tell. I got a story Stand, to tell is a good one. Yep. Uh, the Art of Storytelling from Outcast, Children's yep. Story. Yep. Yep. Uh, kick push, second childhood from Nas. It was a good day. Q, all of mine playing tricks. Child's play from Ghostface. Heaven and Hell, Raekwon. We can get Gangster Project Pat. Brenda's got a baby. Tupac, Damien from DMX, Aunt yeah. Dot from Lil Kim, Troy from uh, Pete Rock and CL Smooth, Black Steel in the Hour of Chaos from Public Enemy, okay. Miss Fat Booty, Regulators from Warren G, Love Is Blind from Oh, Eden, I Port- forgot about Regulators. And then uh, poor Georgie from MC Light. That shit was hard too. Damn, all of that shit fire. I can't argue with none of that. Yeah. I can't. I can't argue with none of that shit, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you. About half that list I've heard, and, mm-hmm. and at least two thirds of that list I've heard. I'm not gonna lie to you. But yeah, so I, I definitely thought that was super dope to hear, hear like your your storytelling. I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to ask Love like what some of his yeah, because story, storytelling. I, I'm in this shit for storytelling first and foremostly. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and I know everybody say that, but like, no, some people just trying to like make singles and get you to dance. Like, nah, I want you to listen. Like, you know, I had a little trivia game uh, that I started this week. You know, to, to help it's mm-hmm. to help. You know how the game goes. It's to help yeah. promote engagement and get niggas to listen. But it's like go back and listen and answer these three questions or these four questions. Like, you know what I'm saying? In this song. When such and such happened, what was this? You know what I'm saying? How much was that? What was this and that? This? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's all types of shit, bro. Like, hey, it was pretty cool because you, you see, it made me go back. I was like, hold on, wait, hold on. Let me really, really listen, listen to- more intently, though. Like, like, yeah. yeah. But I got, it's easy to do that when you got something to go back and listen to. If I got something to say, like, you heard it, right? But if I'm in there mm-hmm. mumbling or just saying a bunch of bullshit, you like, wait, what? Where's that at? That ain't in here. Let me get a chili cheese fries, double bag of cheeseburger, and some wing dings. Appreciate you. He like Hollywood over L. George's. Posted in the Ford Explorer. There's a 20 minute wait on the order. Damn. You would have thought the food come with some Jordans. Just a line around the corner and it go through the drive through. Look to the right, fool. Some hoes from high school. They hanging out the window. Can you get my boo? Ain't no problem, baby. You know Girl, we I got you. you. Seen a nigga lurking all the way in the back booth. Motion to another nigga slid in the bathroom. Now they arguing in the lobby, who finna smack who? The shit feels funny, man. They tryna to and fud him. Pussy ain't the only thing in the air smelling funky. Out the back door, man, them niggas tried to bump him. Put in the blender by some fucking junkies. Man, please, it's time to let that semi squeeze. Just one of them ones, young dog, only 21. Man, they sent him on the Coney run. Really, it's a dummy run. He don't know where it's coming from. They played him for an Elmer Fudd. He hit him with a hundred drum. It's one of them ones, young dog, only 21, they sent him on the Coney one, really it's a dummy run, he don't know where it's coming from, they played him for it, Elmer Fudd, he hit him with a hundred drum. He like Omega over Nicky D's, he was trying to get his double burger with the cheese, fuck with the hoes and lead, they disrupting his peace, they ain't peeped his dog up the street in the Jeep, ready to park they ass like Jurassic, make the whole lot flip like it's gymnastics. Got your Elmer Fudd, time to hunt some wild bitch, had to take a step back quick, now the girls in the window getting ratchet, popping asses all on the glasses. Screaming out extra rent, bitch. Tell one with the fat lips fell in her pants rip. Trying to finesse out a number for a Greek salad. Spit some games to a bad bitch. Man, them niggas think he distracted. His homie up the street, man, he sling guns like his first name, Patrick. Now he got the triple action. On the power play with the federal off, trying to get a hat trick. We could get gangster, that's worth the project, Pat, bitch. They forgot about the Jeep. He trying to get your cheeks, man, he left the scene. Smashing more than his chili cheese. Just one of them ones. Young dog, only 21. Man, they sent him on the Coney. One. Really, it's a dummy run. He don't know where it's coming from. They played him for it. Elmer Fudd, he hit him with a hundred drum. This one of the ones. Young dog, only 21. They sent him on the Coney one. Really, it's a dummy run. He don't know where it's coming from. They played him for it. Elmer Fudd, he hit him with a hundred drum. Be very, very quiet. I'm, I'm hunting, hunting wabbits. Uh, also, I was gonna say one of the lines on one of the songs where you said you're the you're the dark side uh, hove. I now to be funny, I, I, made that shit I was like I was like oh nobody we, called me we that shit. From, from I was like we we evolving from dark side Dom Kennedy to, to hove. Nah, that was just me talking shit, bro. That was the, like, <laughs> and, and let's be clear, nobody calls me that shit. It was a joke yeah. in, the, in in a group chat, 
And we yeah. just was, and we was just, I, I, in that moment when I was talking that big dog shit, I just, I felt that shit. Cause it's like, you know what I'm saying? I, I, moved, I am now. I meant what I said. As far as like I'm on some next level shit And I just move differently Like than how everybody else Was moving and all that shit But You know what I'm saying Like I'm, I'm not Jay-Z Nigga by no stretch of the imagination <laughs> One day I was like oh I was like oh We, we updating the um, The AKA I was like Dark side ho Out here Nah 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 <laughs> Alright Um also, I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about Alice Kane because you know, again, um, produced all the tracks. Yeah. He's playing the, um, the the soundtrack to the, the even bigger project. Um, you had some features from a, a couple of his uh, more recent projects. You uh, got the American Idol uh, feature and yeah. Everybody Dies. I want I wanted to ask you, how did those two come about? First, like, let's go over American Idol. Okay, so again, I've been I've been hanging around with Kane for. How long have we been doing IR? Eight years? Eight years, yeah. Okay, so probably like nine years I've been hanging with Kane, but I, me and him grew up together. Like, like he was a little bit older, but like we went to the same middle school. It was a K through eight school or whatever, and we was on the same hoop team and everything. Now, I didn't know him that well back when we was coming up, but like if we'd be out and about, like niggas would look out for us because like we was like they love yeah. niggas and stuff. So we reconnected down in Houston, and you know I was doing the podcast thing. He was getting back into music. Um, we was both was working our jobs. We used to meet up on lunch at Wendy's, and you know what I'm saying we, you know how it is when you're sitting around with your with your friends, and you got an idea. Except our thing was, we really gonna push each other to like do our ideas. You know what I'm saying? So when we meet up for lunch again in a couple of weeks. Hey, what's up on, on, on the beat store? Did you, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I only did five beats. Oh, well, you said you was going to do 10. You right, bro. I'm going to do 10. What's up on the front porch mix? Yeah, yeah, well, I needed some more songs. Well, you got to go find some more songs. You said you was going to do the front porch mix. You know what I'm saying? We was just holding each other accountable. And so, you know, as as it evolved, and I told him kind of what I told you as far as like, man, I want to rap one time. Like, we, he got beats laying around. Trying to convince mm-hmm. rappers to rap, you know everybody, you know, and I get it, you know, what I'm saying artists are are, are it's they art, so they could be a little bit more uh, fickle when it comes to their stuff. You feel me? So mm-hmm. the shit sitting around, I'm like, I right. he gave me a beat. It was called Supreme. I think you heard it a while back, and I was it was cool. Uh, I liked it, but like it, mm-hmm. it needed work, like for real, for real. So we tried it. Um, he ended up relocating back to Michigan, and. Mm-hmm. We, you know, he was working on so he said, bro, I'm I'm gonna step out from behind the, the keyboards and everything and I'm gonna hop back into the mic. Cause you gotta understand, he did everything back in the day. He like, everything that you see him do now, he did it back then, but he was wild, like like not wild, but like young wild nigga didn't give a fuck, was out yeah. making it happen. He's a responsible family man now, but before he had the cameras, <laughs> he had the, he was rapping, making beats, all of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Part of a group, all of that shit. Like so he knows what he's talking about, he knows what he's doing. So he's like, man, about to start rapping, came up with Origina, told me the, the 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 part about it. He sent me two beats, asked me which one I wanted to get on. I wanted to get on the other one, but I'm not gonna lie to y'all. This is the first time I don't even think he noticed. I was like, I don't think I could like skate on that mug. Like, you know what I'm saying? I could <laughs> skate on this one easier than that one. So we that's I did the verse American uh on American Idol, which I'm proud of yeah. that verse because I, I feel like now. Polished wise, yeah, it could be polished a little bit more, but I worked on that shit for like three weeks. I sent them the reference, but then I worked on it like before we did the mm-hmm. final, final stuff. Like I, I, I uh, like rehearsed it and like kept going. I got an hour and a half commute in traffic, so that's my practice time. I just be practicing. Yeah. It's always an hour and a half to get this shit right. And so then he, he hit me up like, all right, we're going to record, recorded that shit. And he was like, all right, it's good for me. And I was like, bet. You know what I'm saying? Like, so then when, when you know, all his projects don't necessarily like, or he's selective about who he features on what or who he hears on what. Like on, like he really on yeah. some Kanye shit, bro. Like he's like, all right, this would be a good spot for low. This would be for this. I also, nobody knows about this. It wasn't credited, but if you go back to his original, uh, like instrumental tape, Trap Island. Yeah, yeah, that was that was my joint. I fucked with that's Trap I, Island. That's what I told him. I was like, yo, I was like that's when I was first was like. I'm in the gym, like working out to a B tape. Like, yeah, <laughs> I would be, you know, on a treadmill. Like, this is hard as fuck. I don't know who this nigga is, but it's Lowe's homies, whatever. This shit go hard. But, but remember, I had an eight bar little part on it on some like Travis Scott, little Kanye yeah. Donda shit. I yeah, just came I, in. I, was like, I was like, hold on, wait. <laughs> 
Is that love? I just mm-hmm. came in. Look, he, he was like, man, I just need you to just say something like this or just say something like that, blah, blah, blah. Come in, eight bars, boom. Talk some shit, boom. So that was one. And then, um, so again, coming back, actually getting able to rap on, on, on or Gina on American Idol was like fire. And then so he hit me again, knowing that I still got these. I'm working on all these other songs. That, 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 that y'all hearing like like better call skeet was a part of that coney run all of that shit and then he hit me up like hey you got a 16 for this and it was everybody dies <laughs> hey. hell it's, yeah i got a 16 what you talking about yeah and it was it's it's a mean 16 <laughs> well it, it didn't start off me and i had to get there but like i had it and then like but and what i like about when kane put me on shit like it's an energy thing like how we like play off of each other because like he he like how can I say he's just I like to think of him like like artistically when he rap wise he's very jazzy and not even on mm-hmm. purpose or, but like he can jump in and out of shit so smoothly you feel me like that's just a testament to like what he do me mm-hmm. I'm just like raw energy right but like it be on point so like when everybody dies coming, I tried to come in being jazzy too. And then Neezy was like, what you doing? And I was like, cause and came was like, it's cool. But when he say that, I'd be like, nah, that mean I got to I was like, nah, let, let me work on it some more. So I'm sitting yeah. there. Neezy come in while I'm working on it. She like, uh, she like, what you doing? I was like, I'm trying to, she's like, no, nigga. Like he did that already. The second verse, you got to like take it <laughs> higher. Like kick the dough in. Like what's the name of the song? I was like, everybody dies. You're like, kill everybody then. So I was like, all right. And that's where behind the back for the layer, the most valuable player, the triple cross with the laces, the crocodiles of the gate. Like I was going, I was mm-hmm. setting it up. Even then, nobody, I know somebody listening to that track, like, what the fuck is this nigga talking about? But if you really listen to what I'm saying, I was saying some shit. Yeah, that's what I was like. I was like, this nigga is low, is just coming in and just killing him. Cause again, I was like, yeah, I was like, I like the American Idol verse. Like, yeah, like, like that's cool. Conscious, like, right, was conscious, right? So, so like, we was podcasting, but I was like, oh, this nigga came in like, shoot, like I'm about to, yeah, like I'm about to show everybody like. Don't get too comfortable, bitch, I got my Crocs on, no sports mode, I'm too chill, ain't got too many friends, I guess I'm too real, how you feel? Fuck that, I can't give a fuck about no feelings or dealings, everybody dies and I'm the villain. Yeah. Okay, let's get it, bitch. Let a nigga have an edge and they cross you like a crucifix. Them hard way. You can't ride my wave, I took the hard way. Them niggas be bitches under hoodies, they wear lingerie. Niggas think they stepping cause they throw a rock and hide their hands. Fuck around and pull up on their mom in a Mercedes Benz. Niggas think they big time, that chopper bring them down the sides. These niggas be big line, them choppers out, I'm down to ride. We pull up and get them bitches singing at the musical. All I want to call it, should have seen it. It was beautiful. Back to laying low, blowing trees, yelling timber. They in the snow, minus two degrees. It was December. You remember? I can't trust these bitches. Gotta keep my focus. Disappear, they think I'm Batman. Hocus pocus. Put my all into this shit. This my magnum opus. We try to save you from yourself. Damn, these niggas. Don't get too comfortable. Bitch, I got my Crocs on. No sports mode. I'm too chill. Ain't got too many friends. I guess I'm too real. How you feel? Fuck that. I can't give a fuck about no feelings or dealings Everybody dies and I'm the villain Behind the back of the layup, the most valuable player Triple cross with the laces, the crocodiles or the gators That's a question for later, for now it's time to plate up Sort the real from the fakers, this fourth quarter Boys from the men, drop 40 for the win Suicide mission call, Dr. Kevorky, yeah Everybody died, I hate to spoil the end But the armor just so fucking glorious We the deck the Mandalorian Yes, you violate, we give your door a kid Niggas want the smoke with the sick But it hit like a black and mild Look me in my eyes, it ain't no backing down Look me in my eyes, I'm the captain now Cuban links and black tees, that's the fashion now We got all the attachments now 
Now, Chucky Choppers for the Tulare Artillery 300 Black House, fuck your 2 2 3 Practice what you preach and stay away from bitch ass niggas trying to sneak from underneath and look both ways before you cross the street. Get the smack and all this teeth. Yeah, it's who black and all this me. I pull that magnum off, start blasting to them faggots down the seat. Everybody dies. Nah, nigga, mapping out this street. Boy, they yapping like a little nigga. Packy out with heat. These niggas capping out they teeth. Talking about what they gon' do to cold until I'm comfy and pull that chopper up off the Gucci roll. But back to the pistol, I get this magnum squirting. Take my time when I'm shooting. I'm a pacer, just call me Halliburton Niggas be fast on the internet, homie I'm fast in person, mag dispersing Because my crazy ass be thinking crash and person Kane said we in the vents, I'm, I'm hanging out the window, window. To hit your kinfo, case niggas ain't get the innuendo You about to get those, like a cartridge back on Nintendo You will be a big ghost, soon as I pop and let this shit blow My shit great, don't get too comfortable and think this a mixtape Until I snap, and your whole block will look like this straight Don't get too comfortable, bitch I got my Crocs on no sports mode, I'm too chill Ain't got too many friends, I guess I'm too real How you feel? Fuck that I can't give a fuck about no feelings or dealings Everybody dies and I'm the villain Memento Mori what up, though? This your brother, John Alex Kang, um, business partner, man, fellow wolf, half a midnight club. Just want to say, you know, happy birthday and I love you, big bro. Um, you've pushed me way more than you probably know. You know what I'm saying? You know, even going through, you know, the creative funks and the career funks and everything and losing sight and some things along the way on a mission. But you know, it's a marathon and, uh, I, you know, even with my mishaps and, you know, my pitfalls and um, where I do stumble, man, you don't know just how much you've you've meant, you know, just as a brother. Um, seeing you keeping me on the right track, man, uh, as a husband myself, you know, seeing you and um, and and a father, man, and just being a better man, you know, since I was down there on that island in Houston. Um, we always felt alone, but, um, you know, aside from the, the other shit and the bullshit that we did encounter, you know, you always stayed solid. Um, it's really the only thing we miss about Houston, man. We wish y'all was here, but, uh, for sure, you know, just want to tell you, you know, that I love you, man. And, uh, keep going, you know, keep working on yourself and we keep mobbing, man. Uh, it's a marathon. So, uh. Like like Nip would say, the marathon continues, man. And um, big wolf shit, big wolf energy, bro. Uh, love you, bro, and thank you for everything, man. We gonna keep mobbing. Well, and, and, and I, uh, it, it was key to do that. Well, and also I want to highlight too, cause like you know that was that was the like the coming out party. So there's people like, oh, this nigga local, like he, he actually really can like rap a little bit, but. Because it was so like it was aggressive and it was like a lot of gun bars and stuff. That's cool, right? Like I, I fucked with that shit, but like I, my persona or my lane is hustling and like you know what I'm saying, the, the Jay Z type of shit. That's where more so mm -hmm. I was getting at. I'm talking big money shit and like hustling and being a boss. I'm, you know what I'm saying, Lux not necessarily luxury raps, but just hustler tales like payroll or E40 or some shit. Like I'm not trying to like. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 let's dance or like do drill music. Like, I'm not trying to do that shit. Yeah, but if it, if it come up though, because I mean, you know, he the Dexter Mandalorian, yes, niggas. Yeah, let me give you door a kick. Everybody so died out the Florida. Niggas, niggas like, who the fuck is Doctor Kaborki? But if you in Detroit, you already know that's not that's that's nothing new. And then who the fuck would be uh, smart enough and make it cool to rhyme Mandalorian with Kaborki? Yeah, I was like, oh, Dexter Mandalorians. I was like, yeah, it's like, because if you're not like into like Star Wars and all that, you won't, you won't get it. like, what was what the, uh, he's a Dexter Mandalorian. What does that mean? Like, I kind of understand. Get your door hey, kicked in. Nah, niggas know what Mandalorian is. They, this nigga masked up. Nigga don't never take his mask off. Them niggas is soldiers of fortune, man. They just go around just blasting shit. Like, mm -hmm. pew, pew, pew. 
and that's all like that that's a double entendre within itself like like yo <laughs> no it really was it really was mm-hmm. But, but yeah, yeah like, those those were fun, and that, those I'm not gonna lie to you. It's, it's like when you see the ball go in the hoop. That, that gave me the, the the confidence to finish everything else. Because if I'm being honest, I pro- like I told you I, I've been working on locked in, locked in wise. Well, you can say locked in, but like giving it full attention when it needs full attention for three years, I done probably quit about four or five times. Damn. Like four or five times, I was like, man, fuck this shit, I ain't. Man. I, or Coney runs like man, I, I can't hit this shit the way that, I, and I can't finish the rest of the other shit until I finish this shit. This, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then part of me, the agreement that I had with Kane was like, we could work on my shit when you don't have other shit to work on. You understand what I'm saying? That's the thing too, where it's like, you know what I'm saying? We waiting for other artists to come in. If some other shit come in, cool, all right, perfectly fine. Or if we just, you know what I'm saying? We, in between his projects dropping and we got some shit, cool. But like when he's like I'm working on Coney Run Trying to get like My writer's block Like off from that shit He come in like Hey what you got For everybody does Alright let me <laughs> Let me get this going You know what I'm saying So It's just Being flexible there But And, and, and being confident You know what I'm saying Even more as One Making it And then two Now that, I, now that I've been able To kind of like Release this stuff out And then hearing Everybody else's feedback Not that I care about Everybody else's feedback But the, the the trusted circle in everybody like it's enough to keep going with right it's not man don't quit your day job this shit trash you know how it is we don't heard niggas rap yeah. before we talk about it on the podcast all the time like ah right, it's trash it's trash but I don't call people shit trash no more that's something I've learned I've matured on it's just not for me it's just not for me right so I can understand if my shit is not for somebody because my shit is for a particular type of audience or whatever which I'm perfectly fine with but that audience that I curated this like like to present to they liked it. So I'm like, all right, I, I guess I can keep going with this. I guess this is cool. You know what I'm saying? We'll see. Yep. But also on top of that, I was gonna say, if it was a video that he was gonna do for any song, like I think that would have been a fire, fire video for Which one? everybody. everybody dies? Dies? Yeah. Especially because I was thinking like, oh, like I was like that'd be fire. Like if y'all could actually record yourself like in a in a car ride and just like. Oh, you want us to really kill somebody? Up. All right. Well. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I was like, I was like, yeah. I was like, if they could actually re- record them, like you know, doing like a store run or a robbery, like all three of them was just riding oh, the okay, car. Okay, gets... <laughs> Actually, I was, like that. I was thinking of going somewhere else with it though. Like honestly, because yes, if you hear that song, it would be easy to be like, all right, just had him just go do some shit. Mm-hmm. If you go back and listen to my verse, I was talking about sports. Drop 40 for the win. Oh, yeah. Fourth yeah, quarter. Yeah, yeah. Separate the boys from the men. Drop four. Da, 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 da. I wasn't talking about shooting nobody. I was, I was just strictly talking about just the water gun. Like, just, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But no, nah, I'm just like, hey, you know what I'm saying? So my, my thing is, like, if we was to do a video for that, I would like it to be a three on three basketball thing. That, that'd be fire, too. Because, mm-hmm. Again, if you hear it, this all oh, they about to be riding around trying to shoot niggas. Okay, mm-hmm. nah, you heard it, but then we really are here because you think about it. He, um, Kane said, I got my Crocs in sports mode. You know what I'm saying? It's that he going. I come in behind the back for the layup, the most valuable player, right? Mm-hmm. Then Coda Great come in. Shout out to Coda Great. He come in. He talking about Halliburton, like he had, and I think he had another yeah. song prior to that, that that Kane had shot the video for called Ginobili, and that shit was fired. So, like, it could be a hoop theme. Nigga have basketball jerseys on, you know what I'm saying? It, it can't get done rapping and shit. He passed the ball this way. I catch the shit and start rapping with the shit. Pass the, mm-hmm. Throw that shit that way. This, it's, it's other different ways you could go outside of the normal, like, this is what this is. Yeah, that would be fire, yeah. I, see, I need a video for that now. <laughs> see, he got, I, I've, been work, I've been talking to him because I'm like, bro, like, that one, uh, we're talking about Memento Mori now. So even Memento Mori, the, the title track with his, with his cousin Lee, yep. um, or uh, Sly for me one time, I told him he could do one for that. We was talking about doing one for Kill You, and then uh, the track called Kill You. And then mm. I even told him the very last track because of like the emotional energy and I knew the backstory behind it, like Madden 2000. Like mm. it's so many, man. But that's the thing. When you make songs that saying stuff, you can make a video for this whole shit and just make it into a mini movie. Yeah, he, he definitely could. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? And, and each, and, that, and this is what I'm trying to get artists to understand, right? Music for cons- just for the sake of consumption 
cool, right? But like, if you want to last long, tell a story, right? If you want to grow it and make it a bigger piece of art, like, I, and you know this, I've said this on, on our podcast, right? Like on Notable Ruckus, I done made fun of Kendrick a bunch of times, but but as dense as his shit is, like, it could be packaged up and used for other things. You could turn Good Kid, Mad City into a movie. Yep. You feel me? Like, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers could be a play. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, in each song, like, like it could work that way. So, I think that, you know, and, and, and I even tell artists, like, like if you have something like this, this little three-pack EP, right? You can record skits and all of that shit and then and, and make you a little 10 to 30-minute little short film. Yep. And then sprinkle the song. Like, the, and the film is basically just the visual for all of the songs put together. That's all I'm saying. Like, 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 we got to think outside the box. Everything is not just, all right, do this shit. Let me do a little two minute long song, two minute video of me standing on the porch with a bunch of niggas with some guns, this, that, and that. Like, nah, tell the movie, tell the story. Like, like, art, create, that's nigga. Gonna, that's gonna, especially if it's for me, even times just growing up, even now, like, if it's something that I don't really care for, but if you got a fire ass video, I might be like, damn, this song actually might be better than I, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was because. Yeah, I like or, the video. Or you watch the video and and you don't know what the fuck is going on by the time you get to it. But it's kind of cool because the video was cool, but you don't understand it. Then you watch it or it come on an MTV countdown or something like 30 years later and you be like, ah, that's what that meant. Ah, I get mm-hmm. it now. Like, you feel me? Like, 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 think about Thriller. We love Thriller's song, right? Like, like the song. But when you, li- when you look at it outside of the dance routine, that video was long as shit. Mm-hmm. Like a fifty minute video. It came on a tape. <laughs> right. And we tuned into every and every time but but in every Halloween when they play that shit on TV, shit. you stop what you're we doing and you watch that shit. The whole thing. Yeah. The whole thing, yep. All the way till he turned around and do the little laugh with the eye. Yeah. You do that shit. So it, it's, you're like, shit, I've been sitting here for 45, 50 minutes. Shit, damn, I didn't even I got shit to do, <laughs> Right. Um but you know, start about the tor- storytelling and everything. The bigger story, you, and you even alluded on the project, is Wolf of Broad Street. Yeah. So, uh, speak a little bit on um, Wolf of Broad Street and, and what can we expect from it? Uh, oh, hold on. I wrote this shit down because I said, anytime anybody asks me, well, what the fuck is it going to be about? What you going to be talking about right here? Tonight? It's, it's Wolf of Broad Street. You're going to learn five basic questions, man. Who I am, where I come from, what I'm about, what I've been through. And how I got through it. I think that was more than five questions. That was five questions. How I got through the shit. Uh, now, th- that's me. If you don't give a fuck about me, that's perfectly fine. But this is just, this is a, the overarching story is about determination. It's about detachment. It's about depression. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like it's, it's about just navigating through the darkness to find the light. You feel me? That, that's the, the, the ultimate, like, gist of the story. And it's on some, like, it's some good kid, Mad City shit. You feel me? Like it's 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 mm-hmm. gonna be it's it's a soundscape. It's an experience, and, and I say that because when I drop this shit, and things could change and all that, but the the how it's being put together will not change. Okay, if 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 you listen to it when it drops, you're gonna have to start that shit from the top and listen all the way through and kind of like find the story. Now you may lose interest, or whatever. That's perfectly fine. But this ain't no. Let me just jump in on track six and see what's going on in this. Because yeah. I told you, I'm all about sequencing. That's that's one of my superpowers. Like I just believe in the power of sequencing and curating certain vibes and certain things. And because even me working on this for the past three years, it's always been about the story arc. I wrote this shit. Smiles like it, like it's a script. You know what I'm saying? Like this is the beginning. Mm-hmm. This is gonna be the climax. This is gonna be the end. No matter what we change, add or drop off, this is gonna be the end, and this is gonna be the middle. And then okay. filling in the pieces here and there. Now the intro has changed a couple times because th- more beats. So they came to slid me more beats. Like like you know what I'm saying? There's more shit going on. You know what I mean? But like the 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 tent poles the or are there. The framework is there. The, mm-hmm. the, the 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 topics, the themes, they are there. I will say that. You know, we've always talked about, or at least, you know what I'm saying, amongst my friend group, like, the real reasons why I left Detroit. You know what I'm saying? It was a bunch of reasons. Like, just everything was all happening at once, but I was able to finally conceptualize it into a song. You feel me? Like, now, it was a tough song to write. It was an even tougher song to rap. You know what I'm saying? Still working on it, because I can't seem to rap it without crying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, cause it's just a tough-ass, it's some tough shit. 
some tough shit. And then you'll hear some voices on there. Some of them may be familiar to you. Some of them, they ain't here no more. And the only thing I got left is a voicemail. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's going to be on oh, there. That's dope. So it, it's going to be some stuff. You might even hear London. You know what I'm saying? And the 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 the, the cool part about um, Wolf of Broad Street is it will be narrated by my mom. So mama loves narrating it. Okay. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Like this is an art piece because like it's gonna be like some some uh, Hamilton shit, if you will, where it's like you know what I'm saying. The songs is going on, but then like you expecting to hear a verse, but then the exposition comes in and like the narrator is telling you where we at and what's going on. Then we segue to the next shit. Like oh, this, this some bit. Yeah, this is deeper, bro. This ain't just no. Let me just put some songs together and see if they gonna shake their ass too. Because like Coney Run is live. Niggas love Coney Run off of Shadow Work, right? They love Coney mm-hmm. Run. I don't think you're gonna be able to dance and shake your ass or, or catch a, like catch that kind of vibe off of any of the shit that I have on the other one. This is more serious. It's deeper. This is the shit that's like, it's me facing my nightmares in a sense. So like, this is the shit. This shit drove me to therapy. Like that's why it's been taking so long. Mm-hmm. Hey, like, <laughs> hey, I get, I gave you the, the the fun shit, and I was just like, I'm about to give you the, the real shit. <laughs> yeah, but but and and in me quitting 15 times or whatever, right? <laughs> the thing is. Somebody else needs to 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 hear this, right? As every artist would say, but like because I'm putting so much message and stuff in it, somebody needs to hear this, right? Mm-hmm. The other thing is, my uncle, one of my uncles, my uncle Jiro, was like a big influence in my life. They all were big influences, but when it came to the music stuff, me and him used to sit and talk about this type of stuff, man. So I told you I done quit about four or five times. I done heard his voice in the back of my head like several times like you can't quit this shit or while I'm doing it it's like nah that's good keep that like you know what I'm saying like mm-hmm. so I feel his spirit around pushing me through this this process is, is what I'm trying to get at right so now I'm like I have to go all the way through and finish it however it go like this story gotta be told like <laughs> oh yeah I definitely I can't wait um but that's kind of just all I really have for you I just wanted to you know oh, no, 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 nigga. favorite track off the uh off the uh the, the project the EP, oh it's Coney Run for me. Okay, okay. yeah, I'm, that's what I, I consensus. Yeah, I've been hearing that. Yeah, Coney Run. Mm-hmm. Why? Why you like it? Oh, uh, well, especially after re-listening to it again today, it's like oh, I'm catching even more like the like the Detroit stuff that of course I wouldn't yeah, have yeah, known. Yeah, understood. Because <laughs> I was like I was like oh that makes this even even more fire than just it being like a kind of storytelling track like like yeah, get, they send me on the dunny run it was like oh like, oh i'm like okay he's saying like little stuff that again someone who's not from detroit would yeah. not get well, like, I, oh. I, I was using a lot of lingo now the lingo changes from top from like season to season i still try to stay tapped in to understand but like from my vantage point my detroit that was the lingo that's how it went down in my head like like you know what i'm saying like like, like uh, Send a nigga on a dummy mission. Oh, that nigga sent you on a dummy run. Oh, that shit was just a dummy run. Oh, this is that and the third. That means you went over there. It, it was it was pointless. Mm-hmm. Some sometimes it is a setup. Like it's just ah oh, man, go over here and take care of that. Go ask for a nigga named Josh. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah it's in the back, way in the back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Be very quiet. <laughs> I'm hunting rabbits. <laughs> e Ray, the quasi bad guy, the diet coke of evil here. Looking to do a special shout out to my homie, to my brother, Big Low Ski. Shout out to you. Happy birthday, my man, and much, much success. Congratulations on the new EP. Uh, I fuck with it heavy, and uh, I'm overly, overly joyed and so proud of you and everything that you've been able to accomplish. Continue, continue, continue to push the boundaries and do things that we never thought were possible. Shout out to you, shout out to the fam, and let's keep going. Love it. Yeah. Like, and Josh ain't gonna be the only one that, that I was yeah. gonna find you. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. yeah. And then like the Elmer Fudd shit, just cause that was funny. Like that was some shit that mm-hmm. we was talking about internally where it's like, man, you don't want to go out like Elmer Fudd. And really like I, Cause I had some people like Well what's the Elmer Fudd That's not Detroit lingo But I'm trying to make it into lingo Cause the Elmer Fudd Is just basically A, a clueless schmuck It's a dumbass You know what I'm saying okay. It's somebody who like Alright I got this gun But I don't know how to use it Cause Elmer If you watch the commercials Elmer Fudd I mean the cartoons Elmer Fudd was always getting outsmarted 
You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? He was just he just wasn't smart enough. He he you can have everything you need. I'll be very quiet. I'm hunting rabbits and he can't hunt a rabbit for shit. Like so it's like, bro, like shut the fuck up. That rabbit get you every single time, huh? Some something's not going right. You know what I'm saying? And then the, the, the phrase, it ain't fun when the rabbit got the gun because somehow Bugs Bunny would always manage to get it. Remember, uh, Elmer would, would stick the, the, the shotgun into the rabbit hole and then yeah. Bugs Bunny would have it pointed at him like, yeah. dumbass. Like, <laughs> it would go out like a goofy man. Like, never that. Never that. But yeah, Coney Run is, I, I, I can say that too. I agree with you. Coney Run, one of my favorites, especially because I know the work I had to put into that mug for, for it to like float away. I had to land the plane too. Like, it was too far yeah. to not land a plane. Yeah, that's what he said. Eight times. I was like, damn, my nigga had to do this eight times. That was Neezy in the background, too. The, uh, the, uh, can you get my boo? Like, on the ad-libs? Because, oh, yeah. mind you, song structure-wise, I got feedback that the ad-libs was funny. That was by design, too. We all used to listen to Dipset back in the day. You know Jim Jones and his ad-libs used to be like, what the fuck? Gucci, Jeezy, Larry June. Ad-libs are popular. Yeah. They help. I went over on the ad libs because I told you I felt like I could have rapped a little bit more or did more with the hook on Better Call Skeet. So the ad libs took the show there. Um to help the freestyle pop more because it was it wasn't a whole song stuff. So ad libs. Coney Run, the beat is the feature there. That beat is a hard ass beat. So I kept it low yeah. energy. Low that's that's the that was on purpose too. Kind of keep the energy down so you could focus on the story and the beat and then it wasn't no ad libs. You noticed that the only ad libs you heard was the when the cut scene where it got the, like the girls talking or like what the girls say and stuff mm-hmm. is Neezy uh, on, on verse one and Neezy on verse two. Oh, see, it's even now it makes me want to go back and yeah. listen. Go back and listen to it. And for all you out there listening to Music Impulse, you can go. It's the Shadow Work demos on all streaming platforms. Now, you got to find it though, right? Because I know people are like, where do I find it as net? Dollar sign. K E E T G R O dollar sign dollar sign. Just replace the skeet gross, just replace all the S's with dollar signs. That's by yep. design too, because I can't have people following me home. I still got a day job. <laughs> you rapping it. Oh, I heard your little rap project. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. I shoot him up bang bang. <laughs> we can get gangster. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, but it is. It's been fun to, to work on, bro, and, and the goal is that, like, you know, we all, like, do the, the, the healing work to, like, you know what I'm saying, revisit some of the stuff. It's fun and all that, but, like, the, at the end of the day, the goal is to, like, heal, mm-hmm. right, right, to promote, like, mental mental awareness, mental health. Um, I think I said when I dropped it, we all experienced, I was diagnosed in, in um, like, me and my therapist talk about it post-traumatic stress disorder mild case of anxiety like i don't have like panic attacks and stuff but like i just i'm always like worried like not worried you know what i'm saying but like i'm what's this this? i'm scanning i'm always scanning like just always this is force of habit at this point and then depression like i have clinical depression like it's 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 been more bad recently but it's not i've Everybody born in Detroit, everybody born in the inner city has depression. Like, this just is what yeah, it is. But, yeah. like, you're my... Like, you're inner city kid. Yeah. But, but all my shit is, is tied to... Is, is that on top of it's connected to specific stuff? You know what I'm saying? That happened as a sequence of events that just happened back to back to back to back. And it's just like... You know what I'm saying? Like, I carry that shit. Like, I've been carrying that shit for years now. And it's like, just trying to unheal from that. So, that's the journey we on for this year. That's the, the, the shadow work that you've been putting in. For mm-hmm. sure, for sure. Yeah, but, uh, you know, give the folks your, your social media again. You know, let them know where they can find the project, and we'll wrap it up. Yeah, man. Um, you can find me at Skeet Gross on Instagram and Audible Ruckus underscore podcast for the main page. Um, you can find the project on all streaming platforms. Again, just type in Skeet Gross, but replace all the S's with dollar signs. Should come up easier that way. Um, YouTube and AudibleRuckus.com. Uh, inaudibleruckers.com inaudibleruckers podcast go to inaudibleruckers.com slash shop to cop some of the merch from all the different shows uh, Neezy's uh, hair products all of that you know what I'm saying and we got other business ventures going on right now I'll fill y'all in on those as that shit like get further and further down the line but we build it Midnight Club go to mncagency.com follow the creative underscore wolf 
You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my dog Kane for, for always having my back, for always looking out, man. But yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm everywhere. Yeah, um, this is your boy Smiles. You know, you can follow me at Music Impulse, M U S I C M P U L S E, on Twitter and Instagram and the X. Well, Twitter is the X or whatever, yeah, yeah. you know, Facebook. And I still call it stuff. Twitter, bro, because it just sounds yeah, weird. It's like, still, yeah, it's still. I was on X earlier and it was like, they use on drugs. What they doing? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> they still have XC. And again, you know, catch me every Wednesday on I R Presents, you know, powered by the Inaudible Records Network. And it's been another episode of the Music Impulse, and we out. Yeah, yeah.